So what had happened was I went to the storage unit to drop off some stuff that we're not going to be needing here in the garage anymore and I fell asleep in a van for like an hour. What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel man. Today we're going to be working on the EF sedan. I've kind of worked on it the last two days off camera to button up a lot of the mishaps that we ran into on Saturday for the dyno day which the car didn't make it to the dyno but uh, I think we're pretty good where we're currently sitting at with the car and I'm ready to move forward. You guys probably noticed my battery was always on the passenger floorboard because I wasn't ready to um, you know, mount the battery at a certain location yet because I wasn't entirely sure where the battery was going to go. Typically, I put it in the trunk uh, with the fuel cell on its own bracketry system. And uh, I'm thinking like ahead of time here that a lot of the tracks that are nearby to me are really specific to NHRA rules. So if I have the battery in the trunk inside the cabin i would need a kill off switch and all of that um you know safety equipment stuff but if it's outside of the car you don't need it and i think this time around i'm going to put it in the front passenger bumper corner because the sedan is a little bit longer so we have the space to do so having it in the front bumper is going to eliminate like a ton of battery cables running all over the place especially through the carpet all the way to the trunk and all that i'm trying to eliminate having to do all that and just utilize what i already have instead of buying new material i do have have a bunch of zero gauge um power and negative same thing just different color but like in short sections so i'd rather utilize that than to buy a 10 foot which then you know 100 plus dollars for the kit and stuff but uh anyways i wanted to build a battery tray today um before coming home before the storage before home depot i went to the homie kelly builds house to pick up a bumper and um he was like well instead of spending you know money for angle iron which is what i use to make battery trays he was like just take that three quarter flat stock right there i don't need it i need square tubing and you know you can just cut them tack them make it into an angle iron and then make it to a tray for the battery and he was like just take the material that i have that i'm not going to use i said Shh, say less so shout out to the homie Kel for giving me some material to make a battery tray today that's what we're going to be doing so first thing i'm going to do right now is i'm actually going to move the car a little bit more forward and then I'm going to get it up on jack stands, take some measurements, and if everything looks good, pop the bumper off, make this bracket. Let's get going. I did mess with my ride height a little bit, and I got it to where I want this to be. Reason for that is because I don't want to go super slam because my engine is on the second setting, the low setting on the motor mounts, and the pants is really low. And if I ever run slicks later down the road, the gap is going to make sure that I clear the slicks instead of chopping it. And also, shout out to the homie Eric because he did take all eight of my wheels to switch out the Nitto Neogens for the ATR uh k sports so we have some r compounds on here now and the uh neo gens on it before was 205 50 15 brand new right here now on my slipstream and uh, the one on the car is 215 50 15 so we have a little bit more width and eventually i'm going to go 225s but you know for right now this is going to work perfectly fine we have the car jacked up and i did test fit the battery yesterday it does fit here and between the tire and the battery i have maybe a thumb size gap and then once the wheel is straight we have like an inch and a half which is going to be plenty again i don't know if i'm ever going to run slicks on this car because the goal is to make a fast street car on street tires so i'm not worried about running slicks uh with the minimal gap that we have so i think what i'm going to do first is i'm just going to build the battery tray the part that the battery is going to be sitting on. We have the four sides cut out. These long ones right here are nine and a half. And then the shorter ones are four and seven eighths. The battery we're using is the typical Honda 51R or 51, depending on the battery post location. And uh, right now I'm gonna go ahead and get this all squared up, tack it in place, and then we'll build our bottom to get this to be angled to give it more strength and structure.
this gap right here it's at least an inch and three quarter if not two my key is in the car so turn the wheel a little bit here yeah so uh right now i'm gonna leave the battery kind of sitting right here on the jack so i can take the bumper off and that this would stay in this position so i know how to make the bracketry and everything to um tie the battery into the frame so the battery is where i want it to be and uh it pushed forward is probably going to interfere with the corner lamp socket which is this guy right here on the flipper x crx i did the same way and um this actually hits it right here but what i did was i took off the plug and then I just ran like spade terminals to make it shorter so that way it doesn't interfere with the battery once we secure the lamp into the bumper, right? So right now, I'm just gonna take this flat stock and I'm gonna tie in the battery bracket to one of these holes right here. Probably the bottom one because I don't really need to go all the way to the top, but bottom right there, mark this out down low, cut it, tack it, and then the one on the back, I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tie another bracket from the uh, battery bracket tray to the frame and I'm probably gonna either put a nut or a time cert and just kind of tack it in place just so we have a place to thread a bolt into and then on the bottom I'm gonna put another bracket that's gonna tie the lower tray to the 17 millimeter right there on the traction bar so three points on the battery bracket tray and then we'll tie the um, battery tie down into the bracket as well too just to hold the battery in place and the way this battery is going to come out is all the securing bolts has to come off for the bracket and the battery to come out together to take the battery out because i have ejected so high that it's going to be pretty hard to kind of like just pick it up and then slide it over here or i can slice this and then just make the battery kind of like slip in and out but i want this to be secured because this car is going to be vibrating it's going to be moving it's going to be traveling a lot and i want to make sure that this stays put in that bracket This is all the flat stock that I have left. So I'm gonna make the bottom bracket and then tomorrow I'm gonna buy more material to make the third one here. So I need a Z style bracket here to weld on to the tray and then bolt up to the 17. Seven eighths on both sides here. It's like one and a quarter. So one and a quarter and a quarter like that we're gonna go two inches give or take two inches this side so slice here bend it slice here bend it cut this right here to give us the two inch and then this should be the z that i'm looking for
So I just came back from getting the tires put on the van and alignment. Shout out to Nilo, the car dries so much straighter and no more vibration. Went to Home Depot to grab battery for, well, this was not intentional, but I needed battery for the Harbor Freight pump so I can pump gas out of the tank so I can recycle that. I also grabbed hose clamps from Home Depot because um, one, they're cheap, two, they're high quality, and um, I ran out of the ones for the radiator hose so i just grabbed two more just in case and then uh, i grabbed some three inch here for like when i uh, measure up three inch tubing mark it up and then cut it up because the ones that i have um, are much larger or they're stripped out so now i have some new ones i also grabbed some cutting disc from home depot as well too because one these last longer than the harbor freight two it's thinner so it doesn't take long to cut um say it's stainless steel or um flat stock but i grabbed two of these and just to you know add to my collection although i was fortunate to just have one disc work the entire way of making this battery tray and uh, i got some more flat stock here so this right here is the bracket we welded up last night and uh, I entirely welded this. I was just going to stitch it, but I wanted it to have some strength. So all these side edges, I fully welded it up. Um, originally, when I did the um, tray itself, I stitched it. You can see right there, right? But the um, supporting brackets, I welded it entirely. So that's fully that is fully secured and uh, I am going to be making the last leg on this side where the tire goes and then we'll uh, get this thing all painted up. I overlooked this last night. There's a threaded 10 millimeter hole right there that I can use. It is a little low, but I think with this one and this, it's already sturdy, right? And to have this side have it bracket up, I think it'll be perfectly fine. Yeah, this thing is not going anywhere, dude. Holy Macau. I'm 300 pounds, dude. Check this out. Yup. <laughs> that is not, that is not going anywhere. The self etching the primer. I do heavy coat. I forgot to put the tabs for the battery tie down and I'm using the EG DC EK style. Just put a washer right there. Rust-Oleum matte hammered. This thing literally like the effect of this is just spraying on a non-clean surface and then it starts to fish eye. That's literally what this thing is. But anyways, um, failed hammer texture. And uh, regardless of the fact, we got the bracket all painted up. I'm gonna go ahead and just let that dry. And uh, I did get some packages from Amazon. Got this battery tied down right here that came in the PO box. And uh, we're gonna be using this to secure the battery onto the tray, which is what the washes were for. I already test fit it to make sure that we have space for it but the packages from Amazon we have one two and three packages let's go ahead and show you guys what we got inside this right here is what we need to finish the battery relocation Put it away from yourself not towards yourself look how look how look how easy that sliced scary this one right here is Tycon uh, heat shrink wire connector um, I've been wanting to buy this for a very long time because I do a lot of like wiring stuff and uh, I hate having to go through my box and find them like at the very bottom of my bin and uh, you know having to run to the store buying them like 10 at a time instead I just bought a 250 piece kit there are some ring terminals spade terminals like little fork hook u terminal thingamabobs and um, wire connectors to connect two wires together so I got a bunch of these guys this one here Sharp, I'm telling you guys. This one here is the same thing, but different gauge 
spade connectors and uh, I bought these because like I said mine's just scattered all over the place this one right here is copper wire lugs and heat shrink so these are pretty much the terminals that I um, use to like make ground wires or if I need to do a battery cable whatever the case may be because we are doing the battery relocation I needed these right here but I was like, you know what? Let's just buy the whole kit on Amazon as well too. This is a 150 piece kit for four gauge, two gauge, six gauge, eight and 10. So we have a variety of different sizes. Last package right here. Ooh. <laughs> so I had to go take my catch can out of the wagon. This is the same style that I'm gonna be running in this car. It's also the same catch can I have in that car. I designed this out of cardboard, gave the dimensions to the homie Kel, and he catted it up and cut out all the material for me to weld it up. So I just wanna put this in place to know if I have any, you know, any space for the post terminals uh, in this area. And uh, I kind of thought about this when I first bought those posts, thinking that I'm gonna run it here without, um, you know, considerations of the catch can. We might run into an issue, I ain't gonna lie. Yep, I do got Backstreet Boys playing in the backgrounds, don't judge me. Uh, yeah, we might run into an issue because this is the tub where the tire would be at and I can't put posts coming out of there. And uh, I originally wanted it on the side, but uh, this is now in the way. Not sure if I want it down low there. Most people have it here, but you know what I'm saying? Do I really want to drill that right now? I, I don't, I don't know. It might hurt me a little bit. I've been thinking long. I've been thinking strong. I've been thinking hard about these uh, battery posts. And honestly, I don't want to run a lot of cables into the car to have it on the firewall. And I'm like, you know what? I could just redesign a different catch can to sit right here. You guys ever seen the all-in fab coolant reservoir slash breather depending on what you're using it for it sits right here and uh i'm thinking of building one for this corner so we can open up this section to run the post mm. i think that might be the move so we got the battery secured on the bracket and the tie down this shouldn't go anywhere it's pretty it's pretty dang firm. A little tight on the rod itself, but I think we're gonna be okay. Shout out to Chris, when he sent over the K20 conversion harness from CJS Wiring, he did send over this ground cable as well too. So this is gonna be easy for the negative side of the terminal. It goes onto the battery, and then I'm gonna tie this right here into the ground that's already grounded out on the chassis right there. This strap right here is also a CGS ground cable. I might end up making the ground from here, this hole, to the post terminal, so that way we don't have a bunch of lines on the uh, connection right here to the battery. This is freaking awesome. Look at this. It freaking broke off. I had to go through my box to find a terminal. This is a negative one, but technically the same. This one uh, is a crimp on style. Uh, let me see. This one is a crimp on style. This one's a crimp on style. So we're just going to make do with what we have. So this right here is the positive. And uh, set you guys up. So right now the battery tray is not fully connected, but just enough for us to get the terminal on, right? So it goes on right here. Negative is off, so we're not gonna shock the chassis, but uh, this is gonna have to go a little crooked because we are gonna go close to the bumper, and then this is gonna go up to the positive, whichever um, hole we're gonna put it at. And then this one right here is gonna go into the car, so we're gonna loop it all the way up, away from everything, and then run all the way inside the car that is the plan so i think i'm gonna pop the fender off just to make it easier to run the cable up there
So we have the positive cable that's going into the cabin loomed up right here and it is tied in with the wire tuck for the headlight. Goes all the way across and then it goes into the grommet for the door plug right there. And uh, I'm gonna let you guys know now, this hole goes directly into the cabin and uh, you know, people would think, oh, it's easy to just go right there. Problem is this right here is in line of the gutter for, you know, raining season. So when water comes down the cow, puddles up here, goes through, drizzles here, straight down to the floor. If you run anything through this hole without sealing it, water's gonna get inside, you're gonna have an electrical issue. Ask me how I know. I trimmed this grommet right here to fit the two harness coming out of it nice and snug and now we're going to move on to the charge post. Uh, this one right here is for that. Probably use this one for the positive and then probably drill the one to the left of it for the negative. I think I'm okay with putting holes on this side of the frame because if I didn't like it or if it bothered me, I can always put a catch can there and you won't see it. If I did it on the firewall, It'll bother me if I decide I wasn't going to use it or whatever the case may be, I'll have two damn holes there. That will work. I'm gonna spray some paint, make sure we don't get it into the bay. Not gonna lie to you guys, this came from Amazon and I've compared this from Amazon and the one from Submit Racing. The body of the uh, post charge terminal here is plastic and because it's plastic, uh, it's, it's really hard to get this thing to lock. The hole that I chose right here is like emboss. It's like sticking out of, of the uh, frame right there, right? You can see how it's like a, like a little lump. And then on the back side, when I put the uh, terminal in, uh, it took a lot of the threads because this doesn't fit in the um, the gap now on this side. So I had to take off the um, cap right here because this was tied into um, the part that goes to the frame. So every time you take this off, it's just dangling, right? Uh, I had to take this off to get more threads out of it. So as long as I put this on and make sure that the cap clicks, I'm not worried about it falling off. So. Let me go ahead and just kind of click it in place, right? Uh, same thing for both sides, just to get more threads out of it so we can tighten it down. And I did red lock tight the hell out of it because I've already made the hole. This thing's gonna be permanent here. And if it doesn't come off later down the road, it is what it is. So now let's go ahead and connect positive and then build our negative. I broke my DIY bead roller slash crimper. Go ahead and slip the black shrink tube because it's for ground, right? Chop off about, I don't know, half an inch, right? Pop it off, grab the terminal here that's big enough for a 12 millimeter. You know, just gonna use my regular butt connector crimp because it works too. I'm going to double crimp this, two spots, uno, and I'm using the little teeth to put dimples in there, and here goes the second one, Ugh. double crimped on both sides, so eight total, plenty of strong, shrink tube, all the way until it curves, and then shrink the tube. And there you have it. Got some sandpaper.
So I make sure my post here has continuity to ground. And same goes for the positive. Put this on the battery. Post. Yes, sir. So we have the battery, the tray, positive, negative, charge post all installed in the front half of the car. And we need to get into the car to get the battery power cable to tie into the fuse box. Now, normally you run a power distribution block, right? So if you guys are like audio guys, you guys probably use this. Um, it looks like this, right? So power distribution block is like this. You put a big power cable coming in and then you can bridge off of it to feed power to wherever uh, needs power, alternator, starter, power for accessory, whatever the case may be. There are ones that has fuses like in line. So like say this one right here, this one has fuses in line and stuff like that. But uh, realistically from the factory, there is no fuse in line. It literally goes from the positive post of the battery starter and then fuse box so what i'm going to do because i don't have a power distribution block i'm gonna do some hood rat shit so the terminals that are inside the car right now is fuse box and uh i believe the starter so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna terminate the starter the one that goes to the fuse box right put them together and then the power wire that's going from the battery into the chassis goes to this one which then I'm just gonna put a bolt on here, tie all three of them together as a distribution terminal, electrical tape the shit out of it, and that should work like it's supposed to. And then when I get a distribution block, we'll distribute it. Um, you can get ones with stud and a nut, or you can get one that has Allen keys, like this one I just shown you guys, right? Then you don't need the terminals, but because I'm going to terminate these now. I'm, I'll get one that has a post and a nut. So I'm just going to go ahead and knock this out real quick. So I have my power cable from the battery tied to my starter and the fuse box. And uh, it is kind of taped up a little bit there. But anyways, um, I want to test out the alternator, make sure we are charging um, sufficiently. And uh, we'll wrap it up, put the entire front and back together. So... I'm gonna go ahead and uh, connect my ECU here. Let's go. So guys, I'm gonna give y'all that 360 edit. Bam. Guys, it is it is almost 12 o'clock and uh, I got the car lowered back down a little while ago and got it all buttoned up. The battery relocation with the custom bracket out of flat stock from Home Depot and shout out to Kel. I'm super stoked now that we have a permanent spot for the battery instead of having it in the passenger seat and having to take it in and out of the car one too many times. It is secured. It is not going anywhere for a little while. If we need to charge it, we got the charge post and uh, easy accessible from the engine bay. I'm actually pretty happy that I finally ordered all of this stuff because it's been long overdue and I've been wanting this for like, I think it's been on my wish list to buy for like a little over a year now, but um, we finally have it. So I'm stoked to have these on hand so we don't go running around and spending a lot of money to buy it locally at the auto parts store because they are expensive. And um, you guys saw everything we used from Amazon today has worked out flawlessly. So um, sorry, I'm a little tired. I. I was loading up my mom's van because she requested I do this before I close up for the night. My mom loves to recycle, so I got her van entirely loaded up front to back. <laughs> Look at that, front to back. Anyways, I spent like 45 minutes doing that because 
I was literally just beating the bag to get it to all fit into the car as much as possible. There's only like maybe three more bags in the backyard, but I guess that's just gonna queue up for the next time she makes that recycling run. So um, anyways, guys, progress is better than no progress. And um, I haven't scheduled another dyno day just yet because I want to really just go through the entire car and um, even before dyno day, get to the alignment shop. I went to Nilo's today to do the tires on the van and align the van. And uh, also shout out to Nilo because he hooked me up with some Hankook V2s. They're like brand spanking new, 205 5015s for a hundred bucks for the pair. And uh, that's a steal. They're brand new. And he sold a pair to his friends. Somebody came in, swapped over to some R compound and uh, took off the Hankook V2s. I ran them many and plenty of times on all of my other wheels you guys see in the storage unit. So. This is um, going to be clutch for uh, a set of wheels in the storage that has two good tires and two bolt tires. But uh, we did a lot of running around, man. Alignment shop, um, waiting for Amazon. If Amazon didn't come through, I wouldn't have finished this video. But uh, shout out to Kel. Um, man, just, just a whole heap in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the progress update on the sedan. If you guys did, man, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you guys want to stick around for more progress update on the EF sedan, because I'm going to shoot to try to get the alignment done the next couple of days. So if you guys want to see that, maybe drive this car on the street instead of dollying it, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.